Hi there YouTube! Now it seems to be a trend that I'm doing a lot of videos on the Thomas Minis, but I guess that's just because they're the only Thomas line I'm really collecting hardcore at the moment. Now, in front of me, if you're in the Minis game, you'd know this is Series 1 of um, Wave 2, or Wave 1 of Series 2, depending on how you define it. Either way, it's the first lot of 2016 Minis um, that have been released here. Now, the reason this video has taken so long is because if you've been watching my channel, and as I'm going to talk about in a second, some of these engines were released in three packs um, a couple months ago, uh, but the actual series have only just started appearing in stores. Now, I'm hearing now that Series 2, or Wave 2, whatever, is also appearing. Um, I have yet to seen it. I've only seen this wave as of a week ago, hence why this video has taken so long. Because unfortunately, um, when I bulk ordered from an online retailer, they were out of stock of Salty at the time when I did the order. And I didn't want to pay all that like $10 shipping for one little mini. So I was waiting until I hit in stores to complete this set. Now the first thing I'm going to say is, as it's quite clear from this, there are a lot of repeats, particularly in that front row. As you can see, so we've got numbers 1 here, all the way to 19 at Stanley, um, if you're keeping track of the numbers. But... There's a lot of repeats from last year, so I'm not going to have another look at those in the interest of saving time. And I'm also not going to be having a look at the engines which I covered in my 3-pack video. So, both of those reviews will be listed in the video description below. So, in this review, we'll only be looking at the engines which I haven't yet looked at on this channel. Which ones are they? I'll take the rest off and we can have a look at them in this video. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. So you can see over here are the rejects and in inverted commas pile. So you can see all the ones in the back row, ones which we got last year. So I'm not going to be having a look at them in this video. And these ones in the front are new for this year, but ones that I received in the three packs. Now, if you haven't paid attention to my channel, you'll know that there were actually more than those in the three packs, but they don't appear till the next wave of these engines. So I'll note, take a note of them in the review that I do for the next wave of these. So that means in this video, we'll be taking a look at these engines here. It doesn't look that impressive, but that's because half of this wave is old recycled items. But either way, let's take a look. Quickly to note is that I also had the issue with the bags that I know a couple of other people did. So as you can see, both of these contain brand new minis for this year, but this one has the new packaging with the 2016 Wave 1 slash Series 1 indicator on the top. And you can also see it shows minis from this year, for example, Gordon... The uh, Creature Samson and Flynn, which is kind of cool. This packet is the packet from Wave 3 and 4. They use the same um, like details and the same engines on them. But if we take a look at the number, it's number 12. So it's actually a new mini. Um, I believe it's Edward. So this to me was kind of weird. As I bought mine online, I didn't, didn't bother me in collecting. But just as other people have said, I'm going to reiterate, make sure to double check your bags, don't just assume this bag is the new wave or the old wave, make sure to look at the numbers, because obviously if it's left over from last year's, the numbers will be quite high, they'll be in the 60s, 70s, whereas if it's a new wave, you'll see the numbers are quite low, but that's just something to take note of, because I know a lot of stores mix and match them all together, and that's what I found when I was looking for these. Alright, enough of that. Another thing to quickly note is the new display or collector sheet. Now, if you've been collecting the minis since last year, you'll know this is, although the same fold-up design, super, super different from last year's. So first of all, it it's very, very uncluttered. Look at the one from last year's. You had all of the year's minis on there, excluding the super minis because they came later. You can see you've got a massive amount of minis on there, whereas this one only has series one to two, which is kind of nice that they've indicated that on the packet. You can see that we've got, again, one side dedicated to classics, although a lot more space dedicated to each one. And then the other side, you've got the themes. Again, only a couple of each theme. I know that there are more coming in some of these themes. Um, interesting to note that, for example, the racer theme is a carry-on from last year, as is the spooky theme. But you have new ones, like the core moments theme or the graffiti theme. So I think that's really quite cool. Also a little bit interesting. But yeah, very, very few are minis drawn on here. You've actually got a blank whole Blake panel, which just wasn't, there just weren't any blank spaces on this one, it was just so jam-packed. So that's cool, I think it helps collectors. Now something I don't know if other people have noticed, you can see some of the models have a little asterisk, if we go over to the back page, 
where there's nothing except writing, we can see the asterisk means returning favourites, so that indicates models which have already been released. For example, it's not just um, these guys here in the classics column and these ones up here, but it's also ones such as this guy, Pirate or Pirate Salty, aka Spooky Salty. You can see he's got an asterisk because he was released last year as well. So that's something which is, I think, really helpful, is just to Mattel recognising that there are a lot of repeats in this series. Now, what we're all really excited for, of course, is this one. But, like, why did they make it yellow? Why not brown? Anyway, I'll talk about that when it comes out. So that's just interesting to note that the paperwork with these, although it's similar, the way it folds up and comes together, it's definitely less densely packed than on last year's. So the first thing to look at is this creature, Edward. Um, this one is kind of interesting. It's just, I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be. Like, I think it's meant to be a werewolf, judging by the ears, the claw marks, and kind of the nosy thing. But, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't quite, doesn't quite do it for me. Um, something about the, the colours and the, the brown wheels, like, they're not particularly nice, I don't know, it just, these creature ones didn't quite grab it for me last time, and again, they're not, they're not doing it for me. In the same way I didn't, wasn't a big fan of the Samson, I'm also not a big fan of this one. It's just a little bit weird. The colour matching is odd. Yeah, it's not for me. The next one then we have is the Race of Percy. Apologies, I've mixed up the uh, order. They're not in chronological anymore, order anymore. If you want to see what the order was, you'll have to go back to the start of the video. This Percy, I think, is much nicer. Very on point, very um, in tune with the theme for this year, which is the Great Race and Start Your Engines. Really, really nice details in there. Um, they're almost so small that you can't read them. I think it says Sodor Candy Company, Brenner Bay Shipping Company, and... No idea what that blue one is. If someone can tell me what it is, I'd love to know, but I just cannot read it. Um, but it's really, really nice. There's really, really intricate small details. Love the stuff like the cursive here on Percy, which is similar to what we saw on, on Bill or Ben, or whichever one of him was in the racing theme. Just very, very nice. Love the way they did the black wheels to make him look like a racing car. Fan of that one. The next one we're going to look at is Electric Burt. Now, Electric Burt suffers the same thing as the Electric Luke in that they're just not quite see-through enough. I think if they really want to go for that see-through effect, um, this front part here is fine. The yellow actually looks really, really cool see-through. Uh, but they needed to do the green body in maybe one or two shades lighter green. Because as you can see, just looking at it right now, the light just doesn't quite get through. It kind of gets through the, as you can see, the um, the coupling and the uh, running board and also the wheels are made of that kind of translucent black colour. Um, but again, that probably could have been done a couple of shades lighter. Uh, but yeah, the body, even when I put it up to the light, if we just grab my, my lamp here. Sorry if the camera's going to go all weird. It doesn't like looking in the light, but um, you can kind of see a little bit of glowing, but not a whole lot. Uh, yeah, so as much as I think this guy looks really, really, really cool, I think he could have been looked look infinitely nicer if they just got that colour matching a little bit more on point. That aside, got really, really nice printing. I am getting sick of not having the twins, considering we have uh, Bill and Ben and Dash, Bash and Dash. Disappointing we don't have Ari and Bert, we just keep getting I and Bert. Um, hopefully that'll be rectified soon. We need this a new face, guys, come on. Where? But yeah, otherwise... Quite a nice model, just not quite the execution they probably wanted. Then on to another new theme for this year, that is the sweets theme. Uh, this is quite cool. Um, my only issue is that, is that we've already got a chocolate kind of engine, which is the Percy, which is coming in Series 2. But again, uses the same technique, whereby the actual chassis is this chocolate plastic with the little flex in it, which I think looks awesome. Flex plastic can be done very, very well. I think it's done well here. And then they've actually printed on the details for the side of his cab, rather than doing the other way around. So that's very, very clever on Mattel's part. I think he looks really nice. These pastels always look good. I think they looked, in the same way the neons I was a big fan of last year, I'm also a big fan of the sweets. I think they just look really, really cool when you flip the colours around. Particularly when they use stuff like that special plastic. As you can see, it's just shining and shimmering all the way along. Um, yeah, really, really nice. Love those pastel colours. Love that pink. The next one, then, is going to be your Sweets Emily, who I think looks equally fantastic. Again, I just, the face on this Emily is just so mint. Oh, my goodness. You can see it's very, very nice. They've used a... I'm glad they went some different colours with the brown, just to mix it up a little bit. Very, very good job in that kind of creamy, browny colour. Love, again, they've used sparkle plastic, but in the wheels, so you get sparkly kind of 
red and purple, looks really, really nice. Just a very, very well done model. I'm really happy, I think. These are the kind of minis which are really cool. Only problem is, I don't know if they're coming to Australia, but I know they're appearing in the US. There's a baby branded um, sweet series, like Tootsies or something. I've never heard of them. They're American candies. Um, but that does mean there's going to be two lolly themed themes in one year. So, Natal, you need to sort out your baby branding because it's clashing. And then finally, we get the first one of this new theme, Sports. And we get Sports Salty. Again, interesting use of the pastel, but my issue is that then, look, once you put these three together, they all use that kind of pale pastel colour. Um, so I think it works for these guys, but then this guy doesn't belong to that theme, so it's a little bit a little bit confusing. Um, I think they could have gone with a darker orange for this baseball one. Um, but other than that, I think it's quite an interesting theme. It's a little bit weird. I mean, all the themes are weird, but this one's particularly weird. Like, why is he in the shape of a baseball, but then also has a baseball and a glove with a ball in it? I don't know. Yeah, this one's a little bit weird. I'm not sure if the car's... Uh, work when you've already got those colors in another different theme, but that said um, I really much more prefer the bash version So I'm probably gonna like the other sports ones uh, once the whole range of this series comes out, but yeah Not a bad not a bad mini So at the end of this what do I think of series one or wave one of the new 2016 minis? Well the first thing as you can see this video was a lot shorter because a we only had about half of the 19 minis were new minis, actually. Let's work it out right now. Okay, so 11 out of 19 were new minis, which isn't too bad, but considering that's not something that's advertised, and for example, last year we didn't get any repeats except for Diesel 10, which was random, I think it's a little bit of a letdown that Mattel has put so many repeats in. I understand why they're doing it, um, but I think doing stuff like, for example, releasing the repeats possibly in those three packs would have been a better way to do it. Um, just because it does confuse people, and people can't go out and buy a whole box, which is probably the strategy of a lot of parents. When the new wave came out, just buy a whole box and you know you're going to get one of every character, where now you're going to start getting a lot of repeats. That said, on the plus side, for someone like me who's a uni student and currently unemployed, less to buy is good because it saves me money and I can afford to buy more things. So from that perspective I can see it's probably a good thing that Mattel is not going super overboard, although I know there are a whole lot of um, superhero themed minis which I just have no interest in so I'm not planning on buying. In terms of the themes, I actually think the strongest engines from this first one, and my favourites from this, would have to be the classic engines, the Flynn and the Stanley. I just think they as I said in, you know, all throughout last year, I think the classics are probably the coolest because they're just mini pocket-sized versions of your favourite engines. And I think particularly with these guys, they absolutely nailed them. Um, the design, the way they look, just right hit it out of the ballpark. I'm really, really happy with how these guys turned out. And I really can't wait to get a couple more of the classic characters in this style. In terms of my favourite theme, um, again, I was a big fan of... I'm a fan of the electric ones. I just think the execution probably wasn't as good as it could have been. And then also these sweets I'm a big fan of. Um, I might be more of a fan of the graffiti one once I get the others, but we'll have to wait and see. Oop, and there goes my phone reminding me to practice my German. But anyway, that's enough from me. What do you guys think about this first wave of 2016? Are you happy that you're getting some repeats so you can fill your collection? Or are you just kind of sick of it? Or maybe you're like me and it's a bit of a double-edged sword because it means you have to buy less Thomas stuff this year. Anyway, guys, just let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to do all those awesome things you do on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Share videos with your friends. Every time I say how lame that is, but, like, you know, let's be real. It's a little bit lame. But who cares? If you're having fun, then don't even listen to people when they say that you're lame. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thanks for watching. That's what we've got time for. This is Extreme Trains.